Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel if you are new. Hello, my name is V. I'm posting one video every single day up until Christmas, that is 25 videos. We're on day 23. If you missed any of my previous videos, make sure to check those out. Trust me, you do not want to miss out. If you are new to my channel, make sure you subscribe and turn on your post notifications as I'm doing tons and tons of giveaways throughout the month of December. For today's video, I am doing a very simple sweater nail art design. I say simple, but it's pretty intricate. <laughs> I'm going to be sharing with you guys four different ways of doing sweater nails. They're all gonna be kind of mixed designs and patterns, so hopefully it helps you guys kind of bring out that creativity in you. I'm also going to be custom mixing the reds on the nail, so I hope you guys enjoy the video. That being said, I'm doing a giveaway on today's video. I am going to be sending one lucky winner a $200 gift card to Amazon. Make sure you check back at the community section on my channel. That is where I'm going to be announcing all of my winners. How to enter the giveaway. I typically ask you guys a question, but for today's video, I'm just gonna have you guys comment down below your Instagram name. If you do not have an Instagram handle, just comment down below your name and you will automatically be entered. Make sure you check back in the community section so you do not miss out your chance to win a $200 gift card for Amazon. So remember, good luck to all of you guys. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Now let's get right into it. Getting right into today's video, I went ahead and applied the McCart tips, the natural colored ones, and I did apply those using my Young Nails brush on glue. Now I'm just taking my hand file, this is a Tammy Taylor peel and stick file and filing the tip off. I'm going to be keeping that length, however I do want to make sure that I'm getting my shape down perfect since the get go. So I'm going in and filing that nice and squared. Now how I determine what tip I'm going to be using as I do have three different go-tos, I basically look at the design. If it's going to be a dark color or a full colored nail, I do go ahead and use these natural ones, except if I'm going to be doing coffin and I want that easy coffin, I'll use my not polished tips. So it really just depends and if I'm doing clear nails, of course I'm going to use my clear ones and again, depending on the shape, I'll either use my McCart clear ones or the not polished ones. Just to give you guys a little bit of insight if you guys were curious, I know I've gotten that question a few times. Now I'm going in with this really pretty nude color. I'm going to be applying that on the entire surface of the nail. This is going to be my base for my design. When it comes to French nails, I prefer to draw it on there, especially if it's going to be a harsher color. I have this love-hate relationship with them. It's really hard to get it down perfect with acrylic. So I prefer this method, especially if my clients do like to get fills and change them out quite often. I feel that drawing it over top is my better option. So I'm just going ahead and applying that acrylic. I am starting off at the middle section. And for this video specifically, I don't know why, I ended up working upwards and then worked my way down to the tip. Like I said, I typically don't have a way that I apply my acrylic. It's kind of just whatever I feel in the moment. Uh, for the most part, I start at the middle section, work my way down to the tip, and then up into the cuticle area. But I did definitely do it backwards on this one, and then I'm just adding a little bit more thickness wherever I feel is necessary. Thank you. 
I'm just gonna go ahead and let you guys watch this process as it's pretty repetitive and I feel like you guys have seen me do it tons of times. Now, if you are new to my channel, make sure you check out any of my other videos. I have really in-depth beginner basics videos as well. So make sure you guys check out my playlist for really in-depth tutorials.
Now once everything is nice and dry, I'm taking my e-file. This is a Kiara Sky rechargeable e-file. I have her at about 9,000 RPMs. Along with that, I am using my 5-in-1 carbide bit from Kiara Sky. This one is medium grid. I love it for finish filing, for backfilling, all that good stuff. Definitely recommend it. It's a good one. Now what I really love about this bit is that it is tapered up at the top, which makes a nice thickness for that cuticle area. It helps you get into those hard to reach areas. And then the bottom is slightly thicker, which helps with filing bulk product. So I'm just going gently around the cuticle area and then working my way down the length of the nail. I do this very, very carefully, still working at 9,000 RPMs. I am using very light pressure as I'm not trying to remove bulk product. I'm just trying to smooth out that surface nicely. Now, if you do want a really in-depth video on how to e-file, I do have that on my channel as well. I go really in-depth and explain everything step to step from beginning filing to end filing. So make sure you guys go check that out. Once I'm done using my e-file, I am taking my Tammy Taylor peel and stick file once again and filing the sides. I'm making sure that the acrylic is nice and flush to the natural nail. Everything is nice and straight. I want to perfect my shape at this point. So I'm taking my hand file to do that. I'm going to go ahead and repeat that on the rest of the nails. I'm flipping the hand around to look at the nails from the client's perspective. This helps to get all those angles nice and perfect. Sometimes you can miss something from your view that the client might see and you definitely don't want them to point it out. So I'd rather catch it before they see it, fix it, and then they will be good to go. So I'm just going across that tip and filing it nice and squared off. Make sure you have a good grip of that finger and that nail as sometimes this can be uncomfortable to the client. You definitely don't want them to be uncomfortable. I'm going in with my sponge buffer from Profiles Backstage and buffing that surface. I'm going to be doing some pretty in-depth nail art. So I want to make sure that the surface is super smooth so that my nail brush and my gel paint glide on there perfectly and I don't have any ridges or imperfections that stop me from making it as nice as possible. So you want to make sure and go pretty deep with that sponge buffer. Make sure you're getting all the little ridges and imperfections off. Now I'm cleaning the surface of the nail with a lint-free wipe and some swipe. I'm going to be rubbing it in nicely, making sure it's nice and dust-free. This will help with the nail art application as well, and it preps your nail for the top coat as well. Now I am using this tiny container of sanding bands to mix my colors on top. I really just use whatever plastic surface I have. I'm using red gel paint from Profiles Backstage with a tiny bit of black, the slightest amount, and I'm gonna work my way up into a deeper, darker red. So I added a little bit more black to that second red. 
Now I'm adding a lot more black to the third one. The only reason why I'm doing three is because I'm going to be using the red by itself for the first nail. And if I was doing this on a client, of course, I would go lighter for the thumb. So just to give you guys a little bit of insight. Now I'm making this last one pretty deep. So I'm adding a generous amount of black. Now to soften it up a little bit and add a little bit of a different color, I added some purple to give it more of that wine color. Now I'm starting off with just the red gel paint and I'm doing two dots on both sides, one in the middle and that kind of points where I'm going to be stopping my smile line and where I need to connect everything. So this is kind of a cool technique to use if you're struggling. Now I'm taking my 3D nail art brush from Amazon and I'm using that because it is thicker and I'm going to be filling in everything nice and clean. The thicker the brush, the more time you're gonna save. So definitely recommend you guys get a bigger brush for that as well. I like to use all my brushes for different uses. So this one is the 3D nail art brush and like you see me using it here, I'm using it to fill in that color. I'm going in with my first color that we mixed. Again, doing the two dots on the sides one in the center and then I'm going to be connecting that trying to get it as curved and perfect as possible. This is pretty tricky but the cool part about doing it with paint is that you can always go in and I feel like I might have used it a few times. I'm actually using my 3D nail art brush from Profiles to do any cleanup since I'm already using my other 3D brush for filling in the rest of the nail. I'm using my other one for cleaning. So it goes to show you guys how you can use your brushes for different things. And I'm going to go ahead and finish off the nails. Like I said, I would have done a lighter, almost pink color for the thumb. And at this point is where I'm using that 3D nail art brush from Profiles to do some cleaning up. I'm just taking a little bit of swipe and using that to clean. You can also use some alcohol instead. Go ahead and place that in the light. I did put it in the light for one minute. Once it's out of the light, I'm going in with Matte It from Not Polish. I am going to be doing the sweater nail art on top just to give it more texture and that's essentially what you want when doing sweater nails. So I'm making sure that I'm top coating the surface getting into any little ridges like where the French meets the nail, especially right there. Sometimes there can be a little bit of a ridge. So make sure you are thoroughly covering the surface of the nail. 
and then I'm going to be placing that in the light for one minute. Once we're out of the light, everything is nice and matte. You can see by this picture. I'm going in with the exact same color that I used for each nail. And I'm going to be doing the sweater nail art. For the index finger, I am just taking my nail art brush from Amazon, my go-to. It's the blue one. This is the perfect detail brush. So I'm going in and doing two lines off the sides. And then I'm going to be doing my little knitted design by making two other smaller lines side by side all the way down the center and then connecting the left top one to the second right one and then continue that pattern down and then i'm going to be doing dots down these sides using my dotting tool and i did try to create them a little bit on the thicker side just to create more of a 3d effect Now while that paint is still wet, I'm taking clear acrylic. This is from Not Polish and I'm going to be sugaring that over top. This helps create that texture and add a little bit of thickness to that design. Once it's out of the light, I'm going on to our middle finger. And this one, again, I'm using the exact same color that I used for the base French. I'm starting off once again with the two lines off of the sides. And for this one, I'm actually gonna be doing hearts down the middle. I felt like it would be really cute. And it's also a really cute design, maybe for Valentine's Day, definitely would be a cute design. There are obviously endless possibilities, so I'm kind of just giving you guys a few options. So I'm starting off with one side and then just bringing out the other side, just doing typical little basic hearts down the center. And then for the sides, I actually opted for doing slanted lines just to give you guys, again, another option. Super easy to achieve and definitely very, very simple. Again, I'm taking that clear acrylic, pouring it over top, sugaring it over that wet gel paint. And I do about two to three kind of sprinkles of that so it seeps right in and it gives it that thickness and texture that we want. I'm just shaking it off. And for this one, I don't think I placed it in the light quite yet. I feel like I did the rest of them and then I put it all in the light for one time. So for this design, on the ring finger, I'm actually going to be doing like a chained design. Another really cute, simple knitted nail art. However, I feel like this one was probably the trickiest because it's really hard to get those squiggles exactly the same and nice and proportioned. So I just did one side, then connected the other. Now I'm going to be doing two lines down, except I'm making them a lot closer to that chained design. And then I'm gonna be doing the exact same thing on the outer edges. So I'm going to be doing another line on the left hand side and then another chained link on the left and on the right side.
And of course, again, don't forget, while it's still wet, pour over your clear powder. Let it seep in a little bit, add some more, shake it off, and add some more if you need to. Now for the pinky nail, I wanted to do something just a little bit different than the other nails. So I'm doing a horizontal line right at the top, and I'm going to be doing straight lines right at the top. I feel like this would be kind of cute as well to give a little bit of a different option. So again, I'm taking that same color that I used as my base, doing those vertical lines just in that tiny little section that you see up top. It's just a cute little accent, I feel. And then for the bottom, I'm going to be doing the typical sweater nail art across and then another horizontal line at the very bottom. And y'all already know, while it's still wet, I'm adding some clear powder. And then I'm going to be placing all the nails into the light, curing it into place. And then once it's out of the light, you want to clean off any excess powder. And I'm just taking my dust brush and doing it pretty harshly so that everything comes off. And then if you need to, use a lint-free wipe and some swipe and just gently wipe off any excess. That basically concludes today's video. Let me know what you guys think down below. Thank you guys so much for watching and I will catch you guys next time.